Welcome to that lecture online. Now we're going to take a look at a few examples, some typical examples of where we can use exponential functions. So the first example, the first application, is going to be compounded interest. So here we have an equation that says the amount that will accumulate is equal to the principal invested plus the quantity, one plus the rate, divided by the number of conversions per year raised to the number of conversions per year times t. Now n is a constant, r is a constant, and t is the variable, the independent variable time in years. And here the problem reads that we invest $1,000 for five years compounded either yearly, monthly, weekly, or daily at 8% interest. How much will the eventual uh, amount be that we accumulate with this type of investment? All right, so let's apply this each case for yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily. Notice the reason why it's an exponential function is because we have some constant, 1 plus r over n is a constant, raised to an exponent that contains the independent variable. All right, so I'm going to need a calculator, but let's go ahead and write it first for yearly. So if we're, doing to, if we're going to do yearly compounding, we know that a is a function of 5 years, so I can go ahead and say t is equal to 5 is equal to the principal, which is $1,000, times 1 plus the rate, 8% rate would be 0.08, divided by the number of conversions per year, the number of times we're going to compound the interest. If we do it yearly, it'll be once per year, raised to the 1 times t, and t would be 5. So it would be raised to the fifth power. So this becomes equal to, well, we can use a calculator. So we go 0 0.08 divided by 1 plus 1, raise that to the fifth power, and multiply that times 1,000. And notice that the amount of money we'll earn will be equal to $1,469.33. All right, what happens when we compound monthly? Well, when we compound monthly, we'll start earning interest on the interest much more quickly, and so we should earn more money. So if we do it monthly, We have the amount when time is equal to five years is equal to a thousand dollar investment times one plus the rate is still the same 0 0.08 but now since we're doing it monthly and since there's 12 months in a year the number of conversions is 12 and we raise that to 12 times 5 power which is the 60th power so when we go ahead and work that out we get 0 0.08 divided by 12 we add that to one we raise that to the 60th power, and then we'll multiply times 1,000, and we get an earnings of, or at least a final amount of $1,489.85. All right, now let's go ahead and compound weekly. So when we do, when we do the compounding weekly, the amount when the time elapsed is equal to five years, with a thousand dollar investment that will be equal to one plus the rate is still 0.08 but now the number of conversions since there's 52 weeks in a year that becomes 52 raised to the 52 times 5 power so this would be 260 so the exponent now is 260 so this becomes 0 0.08 divided by 52 add that to 1 raise that to the 260th power and we'll multiply it times a thousand and now we get a total a return, no, not the return on investment, because that would be this number minus 1,000, but the total amount accumulated would be $1,491, and that would be 37 cents. All right, one more time, but now we're going to compound daily. So with daily compounding, the amount accumulated when time elapses is equal to five years, is equal to a thousand dollar investment times one plus the rate is still 0.08 or eight percent but now we have 365 days in a year so we divide this by 365 raise it to 365 times five and what would that be equal to well again we take what's inside of parentheses 0 0.08 divided by 365 add that to one and now raise that to the quantity 365 times 5, which is 1825, so that becomes the exponent. And then we'll multiply the times 1,000. And notice the amount accumulated at that point would be 
$491.76. So apparently it doesn't make a lot of difference to the people investing whether or not it's compound daily or weekly. A little bit of a difference between weekly and monthly, quite a bit of difference between monthly and yearly. In the end, if you invest the money for a long period of time, it does begin to show some difference. But here again is an example or an application of how we use exponential functions. This is one case in the banking industry. This is how we calculate how much interest we earn when we invest money and the interest earned is compounded at a particular period. That's how it's done.